Before they could put Hitler in Landsberg prison, they had to catch him, and he was hiding out at Putzi's house. And when the police showed up, Hitler had the arresting officers pin his medal on his coat before he was taken away, the Iron Cross First Class awarded to him during the Great War. Hitler had joined up with Ludwig III's brigade, and 90 days later they'd been loaded onto trains and sent to Ypres, where they were shelled for four days, and they were almost wiped out in the First Battle of Ypres that had stopped the Germans from reaching the sea, and then Hitler and his friends had started digging trenches. Hitler practiced painting pictures in the trenches, and when word got out about it, he was asked to paint the officers' club, and on the other side of the trenches from Hitler were the British. After Ypres, they marched south to fight at the Somme, where half a million men died, and Hitler was hit in the leg on the 7th of October in 1916 and won a promotion to corporal. And then he fought in the Third Battle of Ypres, and his regiment was also in the last German offensive in the spring of 1918, and when it was finally over, Hitler had been present at every major battle, and his unit had been called the Enlightenment Detachment. Hitler had resisted being promoted any higher than corporal because he would have had to, he would have lost his favorite position carrying messages on the motorcycle, and he also did not like to polish boots, but he did enjoy feeding the rats in the trenches, and sometimes he would spear them with his bayonet. The war was not all fun for Hitler because someone stole his dog, and then someone robbed his backpack, and they stole some of his paintings, and they probably ate his dog. In total, Hitler was awarded several medals, including the Iron Cross First Class on the 4th of August in 1918, and a German-Jewish soldier had put it in for him. And Hitler was blinded by gas in October of 1918 and had recovered within two weeks, but went blind again on the 9th of November when he learned that Germany had surrendered. In the hospital, Hitler heard voices and saw a vision, and when he was discharged from the hospital, Hitler became a guard at a POW camp until it was closed down. After the beer hall putsch, Hitler was sentenced on the 1st of April in 1924 to five years in prison, and Hitler's jail cell was twice the size of his rented room with much bigger windows and a real view, and even the bed was a big improvement. All Hitler's friends were there, and they ate a formal dinner together every night, and during the day they gathered around a common table, and many of these privileges had been granted after Hitler had refused to eat for his first two weeks in Landsberg prison. Hitler was allowed visitors for six hours a day instead of the normal six hours a week, and he and his friends could receive all the packages they wanted, and they could exercise outside and take long walks around the yard. They ate very well and could buy a half liter of wine or beer each day, and they would parade around the garden singing stormtrooper songs, and they won over everybody working at the jail. The warden loaned Hitler a typewriter, and he started writing a book and would read his daily writing out loud to his friends, and Hitler would later say that Mein Kampf was premature, that it was only fantasies behind bars, but it became very popular and earned him a decent amount of money in royalties. While Hitler was in jail, his followers kept up their political work by joining the Singing Club, the Pathfinder Detachment, and the Rifle and Hunting League, and at the next election without their leader, the Nazis only won half the number of congressional seats they'd held before, and from this poor showing, the government thought it safe to release Hitler on parole. The fighting with the communists was fizzling out, and the inflation was under control, and Ludendorff was having a hard time with his second marriage, and by the end of 1924 Germany was settling down, so Hitler was released from Landsberg in December after being locked up a little over one year, but he was banned from speaking in public, and so he spoke in private instead. Hitler was 35 years old when he was released from prison, and no crowds were there to greet him and the German Hells Angels were suffering because donations had dried up after the failure of the beer hall putsch. And money coming in from outside Germany was not stretching as far as it had under the inflation. The German Hells Angels had been officially banned, 
and the party newspaper had been shut down, and only a third of the members still belonged to the Nazi party. Hitler had put on some weight when he was in jail, but it came off quickly enough because he had no money to buy food until he started going from house to house getting wined and dined. His hosts began to donate to the party again, and book sales brought Hitler even more money, and in America someone took Mein Kampf and cut it down to one quarter of the text and added things not in Hitler's edition and put it on sale for ten days in 1939, and Hitler sued in an American court and the judge found in Hitler's favor, but only after a half million copies had been sold for a dime a copy. The party groups were still having meetings, and Hitler and those loyal to the German Hells Angels would go to rival political meetings and start gang fights. And while Hitler wasn't allowed to speak in public, he would get up on the stage anyway, waving at the crowd and egging on the fighting, and the other groups would call the police and tell them that Hitler and his friends were not true members, that they were only pretending to belong, but the police would reply that it was not any business of the police and that everyone should just move along. Hitler bought a fancy car and hired a chauffeur, and he said that he was a writer and refused to pay taxes, and he said that the money donated to his political activities covered the expense of selling his book. Hitler wrote, Nowhere do I possess p property or other capital assets that I can call my own. I restrict of necessity my personal wants, so far as I am a complete abstainer from alcohol and tobacco, take my meals in most modest restaurants, and aside from my minimal apartment rent, make no expenditures that are not chargeable to my expenses as a political writer. Also, the automobile is for me but a means to an end. It alone makes it possible for me to accomplish my daily work. The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William L. Shirer. New York, Simon & Schuster, 1959-1960, page 13, with a footnote in the paperback edition referencing, quote, the fascinating analysis of Hitler's income tax returns made by Professor Oren James Hale in the American Historical Review, July 1955. The fallen rise and fall of the Third Reich covered a period of 13 years and was 1,500 pages long. Hitler convinced them to reopen the newspaper and started carrying his leather whip everywhere again and the newspaper announced the opening of the new and improved Nazi party with an article called A New Beginning that made visionary and prophetic declarations about a war for Germany that would decide the fate of the whole planet. The Kaiser in exile wrote articles for Hitler's newspaper and with every new edition people were eager to attend the next meeting to see what exciting thing Hitler would say next. So many people came to that first meeting that the police threatened to close them down again, but only after allowing Hitler to speak for two hours amidst the heavy beer drinking, and the crowd shouted, Hitler, we want Hitler! And from that meeting onward, Hitler was their only leader, and he began to wonder if he was the Messiah, and so did many others. Hitler would go to as many as eight meetings a day and was asked to speak as soon as he showed up, and he emphasized that the party should stick to their primary purpose, which was getting rid of Jew communists. And while the original platform had included both drunks and Jews, so many of the membership were heavy drinkers that they dropped the drunks part and just stuck to Jews. Hitler said that when enough members were elected within the government of every country, these would become the new leaders of the world, and Hitler said that the Nazis didn't need guns because they could accomplish their mission with their fists alone. Hitler didn't want Germany to take over the world, but for the world to become Nazis, just as the communists expected the world to join with them after the Re Russian Revolution. And Hitler expected America and other countries to get with the Nazi program on their own, and he believed people would be eager to become Nazis as soon as they heard the message clearly. When he read newspaper stories about labor strikes and riots and class warfare in England, 
Hitler hoped to liberate the English with the wholesome Nazi way of life, and Hitler's reading of popular books taught him that willpower was greater than knowledge because the English knights of King Arthur had tried to change might makes right but had failed, so Hitler knew that the round table had been a waste of time, and now in Germany might would make right. Hitler considered this idea to be historically profound as an old primal German wisdom born in Sparta and nourished in Rome. And Hitler invented a new salute that people thought was Roman, but Hitler claimed it was German, a gesture of greeting from the old days of German chivalry when they came into court and raised an open palm to show no sword was held in the hand. After all, Hitler had been an altar boy, and he enjoyed processions and costumes and ceremonial enactments, and he knew the effect of solemn creeds and the power of blind faith, and most importantly, he had a taste for history and refused to allow the original party platform to be changed or updated because the old rusty version had depth and weight as an historical document, and for that reason the original held authority and strength. Hitler thought that the Beer Hall Putsch proved that the state needed a police force loyal to ideals rather than to masters, so the SS was created on Armistice Day in 1925, two years from the day he had been arrested and charged with high treason, and the Beer Hall Putsch became the Nazis' official birthday. The groups had been electing Hitler their chairman, but grew tired of having to continually re-elect him. So they voted him in as the per permanent chairman, and Hitler became the conscience of all the groups. <laughs>